Blue Cypress is in the center of the state, at the headwaters of the St. Johns River. Easily one of the most beautiful sites we've been to this entire season for a lot of reasons, but the biggest reason is that it is a glimpse directly into the soul of Florida. What Florida was 100 years ago, what it is today here, and it's all because we decided that this was worthy of protection. So what I know of fishing is that you get out early, and especially bass fishing, because the water's gonna be cooler in the morning, and we know the water temperature here is gonna be super hot in the middle of the day. So we were going to throw top waters in the morning and then switch to something on the bottom, maybe a worm or some kind of twitch bait in the afternoon. And um, that's our plan. Chastin, thank you so much for coming thank over you. all the way across the state to come fish with me <laughs> in a lake you've never fished before. <laughs> it's important that we, that we speak to the younger generation. You are like the biggest voice in the younger generation. Thank you. So this is Blue Cypress Lake. And this is one of several lakes that are at the headwaters of the St. John's River. And um, St. John's River is like one of the biggest rivers and the biggest tributaries in the state of Florida. Yeah. Right? And so anything that happens here with the water affects the entire watershed, right? State pretty much. Right. And, um, and this lake is just beautiful. I mean, cypress trees in the middle of, in the, middle of the water and beautiful grass. The water's clean. Um, but there's a story to tell, and we'll talk about that. But thank you so much for coming up here today. Thank you for having me. I am Chaston Whitfield. I am 19 years old. I am founder of Chasta Nation, and what Chasta Nation is, is a group of anglers who help me teach kids about fishing, and also we take disadvantaged kids fishing. So like kids in wheelchairs or kids who don't usually get a chance to go fishing, we take them fishing. Oh, that was a hit for sure. Oh. Ah. It was a barracuda. Yeah. Dang it! <laughs> oh my goodness! So we were captivated by the scenery. I mean, uh, again, fishing around these cypress trees and stumps and and lily pads and beautiful green grass. And it was just a scene, scenery that we don't see all the time. And we just kept fishing. We are the stereotypical fishermen. They're true fishermen who just has eternal hope that the next cast is gonna be a fish. And we got a couple bites and we just kept fishing. Ooh. No, 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 no. That was a bite. Oh my gosh, that hurts so bad. Oh, that is so dumb. <laughs> Bass are dumb. Gosh. Yeah, it's the fish, not the people. <laughs> oh, my heart is racing so fast. Come on. Oh, that was a fish. Damn it. <laughs> After several hours in the morning, just not being able to get a, a fish to the boat on what we thought were great patterns, we decided to go back to the bait shop we saw that morning and see if they had any live bait for us. Maybe one of the coolest little bait shops in the state of Florida rich in history because it has not changed. It was a very pleasant surprise when we walked into the Middleton's bait shop and ran into Captain Roy Bass. He is now the owner of Middleton's fish camp and I'd, I'd beg to differ if you th think you found anyone who knows this place better than he does. So tell us about this place, it's beautiful. I mean, the most beautiful place I've seen so far this year. Blue Cypress Lake is 6,700 acres. The only fish camp on the whole lake is Middleton's fish camp. Everything's mm -hmm. grandfathered in, headwaters of St. John's. Mm -hmm. Got a good bass fishing, bird photography. Yeah. Well, I know there's a lot of history here. I know that you're not Roy Middleton. No. Nope. You're Roy Bass. Yeah. So, so talk to us about Mr. Middleton. Joe Middleton founded his place in the early 60s. Uh -huh. He took care of it for 52 years. Wow. And he died four years ago and basically passed the torch down to me. Mm -hmm. Big shoes to fill. Because, Never be able to fill his shoes, but I'm gonna try. Because the, the story is that he fought to protect this place with his life. He dedicated his whole life from the day he took it over and to the day he died to make it what it is today. Um, I wish I could take some credit, but I can't. It's all from him. Well, you, you got the torch now, right. for sure. I'm grateful for Mr. Middleton because 
we wouldn't see this place. We wouldn't be here today if, if he hadn't saved it. Right. And well, it's uh, all grandfathered in, so it's going to stay the same if I have anything to do with it. Awesome. So we spent all morning looking for these bass in this lake, and we know they're there. We just don't know how to catch them. So we're hoping that you can lend some of your local knowledge. Well, we'll go out and try and see what we can do, but fishing's fishing, but we're going to get some, I'll guarantee it. Roy didn't only have live bait for us, he had an entire plan to show us his side of the lake. And that plan included a sleigh ride and his totally tricked out airboat. I don't think any of us knew what we were in for, but I'm so glad he took us because we got to see a side of Blue Cypress that is just unbelievable. This segment is brought to you by Angle. Live original. Florida Sportsman Waterman is sponsored in part by these fine companies. Roy took us out to a spot and um, a very unassuming spot. Very much like a lot of the, my best spots in the Everglades. You, you wouldn't know it was a great spot unless you fished there. And uh, I could tell it was a good spot right away because when I looked back at Roy, he had a big smirk on his face. There we go. Get him, you got him. Got him. Yes, that is not a bass. There he is. Right. That's what a bass looks like, Roy. Thank you so much for showing me. We fought all morning long, throwing every plastic in the box, which was a lot try to catch one and we couldn't catch one. Thank God you were there to help us. I mean, we had to resort to shiners. Shiners? But yeah, shiners is the way to go. Uh-huh. I have a feeling the day's gonna turn around and we're gonna catch a lot of fish now. I think you're right. Well, I appreciate you taking your time and, and showing us what it's like. I'm gonna let this guy go best I can. All right, buddy. Thanks for coming. So the problem is multifaceted. Like every other fishery we've been to, like every other watershed and estuary that we've been to this entire season, the problem is complicated and it's not just one single thing. But here we wanted to talk about biosolids, which is just an easy way, a nicer version of the real problem, which is sewer sludge. And um, for some reason in the state of Florida, we all thought it was a good idea to use sewer sludge as a fertilizer for grass specifically in pastures for cattle. Conceptually, it's a good idea, but unfortunately, that sewer sludge ends up in our watershed, um, just naturally. We have a hurricane, we have a lot of rain, we have good water flow one year, and all of a sudden, that stuff ends up in the watershed. We don't know if, it's, if it has a direct link to any of the major water issues, but we do know it's a source, point source, for high phosphorus and high nitrogen that we know is a problem throughout the state. Yes. Good job, Chaz. I don't think the younger generation knows about all the water stuff going on right now. I think they're mostly focused on fishing. Like, I think they put all that stuff to the side, but it's like, it, it's coming in hot. Like, it's coming in quick. Like, places are getting, like, knocked out. Like, back where I'm from, there's a flesh-eating thing in the water, and we need to realize that this is happening and like because we're the we're the next generation like we are like it's it's got it's about to land in our hands so we're gonna have to take it and run with it and fix this before it blows up we caught a few really healthy bass and it was great to see that green color on them on their backs to, to break the ice because we had a pretty rough morning and as very much as Roy described we were gonna get to this spot we we're gonna throw some baits out and we we're gonna definitely catch some fish but well, we were looking for that big thump. Join us for this week's On the Conservation Front as we dive deeper into critical water issues facing the state. Florida Sportsman has been leading the fight on the conservation front lines for over 50 years. Over 100 natural Central Florida springs feed the St. Johns River on its journey from the headwaters to the ocean. Let's join St. John's Riverkeeper Lisa Reinemann to discuss the health of the springs and the threats they face right now. Lisa, you are the St. John's Riverkeeper, but today we're here at Blue Cypress Lake. Why are we here? 
So Blue Cypress is the first lake in the St. John's River of Lakes. And so this is where it all begins. This is where the St. John's River begins its 310 mile journey to the Atlantic Ocean. So why, as a St. John's River Keeper, are springs so important to the St. John's watershed? Our river is only as healthy as our springs. And so if we are gonna restore the St. John's River, we have to restore the more than 100 springs to provide more than 30% of its flow. Not only is that fresh water important to where it meets the St. John's, it also helps balance out the estuary. The St. John's River has a 100 mile estuary and we're seeing more and more saltwater intrusion due to sea level rise and manipulation of the channel with the dredging. And the fresh water coming from the springs helps balance out and hold at bay that saltwater intrusion. Lisa, what are some of the things that people can do to help protect Florida Springs? We need to all take a stand throughout Florida to protect all of Florida waters. These actions that we can take today that can protect the springs, but also protect the waters throughout the state. One is to use little to no fertilizer. Conserving water, the more water that's in the Florida aquifer, the more water for our natural systems. Then also using your voice. So get involved, get involved with us at St. John's River Keeper or your local organization, but let's all stand together for Florida waters. This segment is brought to you by Yozuri, fish the best. Florida Sportsman Waterman is sponsored in part by these fine companies. The water to the kids that I take fishing gives them, it's like therapy, kind of. Like they forget about whatever issues they're struggling with, whatever disease they have, whatever problems, like if they have to go through chemo tomorrow or go to chemo tomorrow, they're not worried about that right now, they're only worried about catching that fish. And it like, it like washes everything away and they're just focused on what they're doing that second. Even if it's like two seconds, if it's just a hookup and it breaks off, they're like, their mind goes straight to the fish. It heals them. I actually just took my last kid fishing uh, last week on Monday, last uh -huh. Monday. So I'm, I ran out of kids, but I went through um, Children's Dream Fund Foundation. Uh -huh. I went through their, them and I took all their kids fishing and then I had a couple that were like, they've heard of me. All right, ready, ready, ready? No, up, 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 up. I forgot, but I did it, I did it. <laughs> that's nice. a good one, that's a good oh one. Oh my gosh. Here stay you go. tight, nice and easy. That's a good one, man. Nice and easy. Keep the tip to the left, 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 left. Please be 4.11, please be 4.11. <gasps> That's a nice good one. Oh my gosh! Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh! Nice and easy, Chess. Nice and easy. Keep the tip up. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. Okay, stop reeling. I'm just backing up. <gasps> oh my yes. goodness. <gasps> <gasps> Real tight. You did good. Oh my god. Now that's what we're at. That's gotta wow. be bigger than four, right? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. I don't know why, I'm just gonna start crying. You stuck crying. with it. All morning long, we couldn't catch him. You stuck with it, look at that. Oh my. <laughs> what, do you, what do you guess, Roy? This is my well, personal best. Let's not guess, let's put him on the scale. All right, oh let's do gosh. that. Oh my gosh, if it's my personal best, I am going to cry. <laughs> I don't know, oh my gosh. That's what fishing does. Look at his mouth. Here you go. Oh my gosh. How big you think he is? Let's do some. Four something. Just at six pounds. Oh, yes. What? Are you yes. kidding me? I'll show you. Oh my god. I'm just putting him in the water so he can get some air. Oh my god. He's six pounds. <laughs> oh my goodness. If there was no water, I don't know what I'd be doing. I'd probably be stuck in an office somewhere doing something I hate. But instead, I'm stuck out here doing something that I love to do. <laughs> it's very important. If we didn't have it, I don't know what I would be doing. I don't know where it would be. I definitely wouldn't have just caught a six pound bass. <laughs> Very emotional today. There was no water, good Lord. <laughs> We'd be going crazy. I would be going crazy. Like if, if like the world just like, not the world, but like the water world, if it just stopped, I'd be psycho. <laughs> I'd be bouncing off the walls, 
going crazy. Like they were, that, that wouldn't happen. I actually scratch that. That wouldn't happen. If there was no water, that's not even a question. There will be water. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. I won't let it. Chastin's coming down off her high. She is absolutely pumped about catching her personal best. And we were all celebrating uh, really high on that achievement, but burning at our core, literally. The sun is so hot. So we decided that we were gonna go back to Middleton's fish camp, catch a little bit of AC, talk some more about the history, and maybe get out in the back, back out in the afternoon. Joe Middleton caught these through the years. He caught probably more big bass than anybody that I know, but these is his three biggest fish that he caught. And if he mounted every fish that he caught, there probably wouldn't be a bare spot on the wall anywhere. So Blue Cypress is at the headwaters of the St. John's River. And why is that important? Well, the St. John's represents hundreds of millions of dollars in just recreational activity annually on, in the state of Florida. If this water goes down to drain, then my livelihood does. And a lot of people depend on this lake for their livelihood too. What happens here happens further down north of us. And there's a lot of people that make their living on St. John's. And uh, it starts, it all starts right here. Skiing across the water. Yes. Woo! It's a green fish. Hey, buddy. Fishing with Mr. Roy was awesome. Like the airboat rides and the spots that he took us to where there's a fish at almost every spot. And I, I'm still like mind blown that I just caught my personal best on an airboat on my bait. Like that is something I, like people won't believe that. Like I can already tell, people won't believe that and I just did that and the fact that he helped me do that is amazing. Kick, I don't know what this is. Oh shoot! Did you see that? It? it just broke me off. Oh man, that was a big old fish. I think I got in the weeds. Oh, no, wow. no, no, that is not okay. That was a big bass right there. Dang. My heart is beating so fast. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Here, I'll set you back up. <laughs> Dang it. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Out here, we we're literally in the center of wild Florida. And when you're trying to get to the best spots, you're not sure exactly how you're gonna get there sometimes. And we had to climb rocks and go through this high uh, grass and we were stepping on ants and watching, you know, uh, all kinds of wildlife scatter, scatter through and fly overhead. And uh, it was just a, a unique experience that you're not gonna get in many other places. I'm in the jungle and uh, I'm trying to catch jungle fish. What I really wanna do is catch these tilapia. There's like five pounders all around me right now. Wow. That was amazing. Got him. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, buddy. <laughs> Yes! On the top. As we were slipping and sliding all around Blue Cypress and surrounding estuaries, uh, the wildlife just like coming out of the trees, it seemed like. We saw alligators and ospreys and bald eagles and all kinds of birds. We saw a, an endangered sail kite, which is a sight for sore eyes and one of the most beautiful birds I've ever seen. Nice. Ooh. Dang. Yes, sir. So in this spot, there wasn't any activity on top of the water. It was in the afternoon and uh, the water was a lot hotter, so we had to go really slow and work big purple worms on the bottom. Got him. Here you go. Ah. Got him. Ooh. Gotcha, buddy. Bow to him. <clears throat> With a mouthful of purple worm. Yeah! Yes. I feel very honored to come here and talk to the younger generation or my generation to help 
influence them and to help influence other people and hopefully to get people's attention to do something and act upon this before it, it goes bad. So what's the story of Blue Cypress? The story is that it is a beautiful lake full of fish. But if you don't know what you're doing, you're not gonna have a lot of success, like most of the fisheries in the state of Florida. Local knowledge is the key in most cases. And I'm so grateful that we ran into Captain Roy Bass and he was able to spend a day with us on his lake. We caught bass literally in every spot we went to, from small to large, to Chaston's personal best. And it was just a great day of catching fish with multiple methods. I am Captain Chaston Whitfield. My name is Captain Brian DePerrick. I am Captain Albert Hernandez. I'm a proud Stewart, Florida fishing guide. I'm a proud fishing guide in Apalachicola. Proud Southwest Florida fishing guide. I'm a Floridian living in Central Florida. I was born and raised in Florida. My name's Captain Scott Owens. I'm a proud fishing guide in Key West, Florida. My name's Roy Bass, born and raised in Vero Beach. My name's Peter Miller, I'm a Floridian. I'm Captain Kyle Pitts. I'm a 20-year veteran guide here in Tampa Bay. I'm a fifth-generation Floridian. I am proud to be a captain in the Biscayne Bay area. And I've been fishing the Everglades since as long as I can remember, and... And I am a waterman. And I am a waterman. I am a waterman. And we are watermen. My name is Captain Benny Blanco, born and raised in this beautiful state of Florida proud steward of the water in the Everglades and all around the state. And we are all watermen. Not only is it our responsibility to educate and to spread the right message, but it is absolutely our legacy. And what we do today determines what our children will have in the future.